owner of Depeche Mode, Yazoo and Erasure. And today he's going to show us around his studio called The Cabin, which contains all of his old analog synths, a whole bunch of drum machines, and we're also going to talk to him about how to write the perfect pop song. Well, my move to America came about because I got married to an American. We moved to New York first because I thought that would be really exciting and just got fed up with it, you know, it was just too much. And then that's when we came here. The studio I had in the UK was purpose-built and um, everything was built into the walls. And it was, it was a really good working environment, but um, as I got more gear, you know, I just ran out of space. So I decided this time to, ha to build it like a workshop so that I have access to the backs of all the synthesizers so I can plug stuff up, you know. And also it means that I'm not sitting on my ass all day, you know, I'm actually running around doing things, so <laughs> keeps me fit. 99% of all this stuff I use. And stuff I realised I wasn't using, I've gotten rid of. Do you consider yourself like a, a gear hound? Not so much now, no. I mean, I used to. I, I got a bit obsessed probably in the late 90s, you know. But I'm over that now. That was a phase. I'm grown up. Yeah. <laughs> well, back in, you know, in like kind of 1980, um, you know, people like Gary Newman and the Human League and Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark were kind of happening in the charts. And it was the first time, really, that pop music was being made on electronic instruments. So it was really, really exciting. You know, the punk thing had happened, and that kind of didn't interest me much, because that seemed to be a rehash of everything else. But when the electronic pop scene exploded, I mean, it was just... I was just, you know, got, it was just so exciting. Well, Depeche Mode started out as a duo. It was kind of myself and Fletcher. He was playing bass and I was playing guitar. And then his friend Martin got hold of a synthesizer, so then we all decided to get synthesizers, because they seemed to be easier to play. And uh, then we got hold of Dave to do the thing. All right, ready? He would dial in the, correct, the song number four, which would be that tempo. <laughs> Go bang! Stop. The uh, drum machine for the song. Yeah, and that's the exact one that was. Yeah, they're the exact number the still. Yeah, we each have nine songs in our set. Isn't that cool? And what happened was um, we were supporting an artist called Fad Gadget, who was on Mute Records, in a pub in the uh, east end of London. And Daniel Miller from Mute Records came backstage and said, Do you want to make a record to make an album? It was just like. Every day seemed like Christmas. It was just incredible. Well, the first album, Speak and Spell, Daniel Miller from New Records produced that record, and I think um, he's the person that kind of um, pulled it all together and made it cohesive, and also introduced some different sounds into the tracks that we hadn't, that we couldn't perform live. For instance, using a sequencer, which we'd never done before. You know, getting some decent drum sounds from an ARP 2600, stuff like that. I've heard that you, l you like to build drum sounds out of synthesizers a lot. Most of the drum sounds that, you, that Erasure have used have been synthesizer sounds, yeah. Um, you know, I, I just get a lot of satisfaction out of get, getting sounds from nothing and not using presets. So this is the famous System 100? Yeah, so this is a Roland System 100. It's, um, this is the first modular synth I, I got. What's the thinking behind having six of them? I don't know. I mean, I, just because you can, you can make the sounds more complex. Um, and also, I mean, I can, I could take, th this is, the, this is the, this kind of the same system, really. This is the Roland System 700, and it's kind of the forerunner of that. It's a bigger right. version. But, you know, you can um, mix and match, so I can take, um, you know, I can use the filter on that, the VCO on that, the envelope on from somewhere else, and, you know, try and get a, try and get a different sound. I mean, obviously, with soft synths, it's even easier to do that now. But I like the physicality of doing it as well. You know, I like the idea of using two hands to create a sound rather than just using a mouse. And how do you come across these? I mean, they're not super easy to find. Well, this I bought new. OK. Because um, that's how old I am. <laughs> so we did the Pro 1, then? That's the... Yeah. I feel like I'm a, like a car salesman or something. This, uh, this is lovely. <laughs> this is the Pro 1 probably my favourite monophonic synthesizer. It was used for probably most of the sounds on the first Yazoo record. It's got a really warm sound. It's got a very fast envelope, so again, it's good for percussive stuff or basses. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the Syrinx, and um, it's got just a really unique sound. It's very metallic sounding. What, what have you used this on? 
Again, I mean, we've you, all, all, nearly all of this stuff has been on all the Eraser records. You know, I try and use different synthesizers throughout the album. You know, I don't. If I get stuck on one synthesizer, then obviously everything's going to sound the same. So. I spoke to my friend um, Martin or Duro or something. I mean, Erasure now, we've been together for almost 25 years, you know. And I think because we've always been more interested in the songwriting over style, that people really appreciate that. You know? Everybody likes a good tune. I'm so in love with you. I'll be What makes a perfect pop song, do you think? Something that's, that has, a, well, obviously, a catchy chorus, but also that, something that has a bit of tension in it, either with the lyric or with the disharmony, that then um, it's almost like then you get a, like, kind of a, like a, an emotional release when that goes away. That might be the chorus or something like that. That's, so that's to me, is a, is great writing. Did you start off writing guitar? Yeah, I started playing guitar and um, writing on, on guitar. Yeah. And still, still do actually. Not on synth. No, no. All the when, when we myself and Andy from Erasure uh, write for our albums, then we'll invariably use acoustic guitar and sometimes piano. So the electronics and the synthesizers, you know, that's just the, that's the tools of the trade, really. It just so happens to be what I enjoy using, you know, but. When it comes down to it, you know, the songs that, that we write now, you can play on the guitar and they'll still sound like pretty good songs. We never write with synthesizers because it would just be too distracting. You know, before we go into make it turn it into a record, the song has to be great. So, you know, and you always have to keep that that that, that the song in your head whilst you're making the sounds for it. To make a drum sound, I use the filter. <laughs> How often do you find yourself going to the 2600 for drum sounds? For kicks, a lot. So it's got like a really, a really good uh, low end. And it's really a case of you know just kind of like messing about with it. And when we used to work with with uh, Daniel, the first time doing the first Fresh Mode album, he would be hours on this thing, and it would drive us completely mad. <laughs> just the sound of this thing going, you know, making these sounds all day. Can, can you add other rhythms into that? Yeah, so I mean, what I would do is like I'd start off with the kick drum, say, and then I'm using this System 100M, and it's really simple because it's um, that's the sound of the filter, and a very simple drum sound would just be to add some white noise to that. You can tune it, and that's kind of a simple. You know, snare drum sound. So, so can you have it so that that, that kick is running at the same time as this yes, snare right. and it's to get it? I've got this it's, it's being triggered by the ARP sequencer. So if I say using this for a bass sound, say, basic bass sound, and then I can change the notes here randomly. I, I tend not to write melody lines so much on this. It's more kind of like vibes and grooves and stuff, you know? Uh-huh. But it's good fun like, working like this, you know? Yeah, it's great. It's a lifelong love affair, and it's, um, you know, it's very, very satisfying, you know, because um, most of these keyboards don't have memories, so you're creating something from nothing, and hopefully something that, you know, that's never been heard before. Do you think there's ever a point where you might you might stop, you might pack it in? I I, I think about it now and then, actually, yeah. But um, I get such a lot of satisfaction out of, you know, in making music. You know, I can't think of... I can't think of anything else that I would rather do. I mean, you know, to actually be able to sit down and create, you know, and make something from nothing is so um, fulfilling. I'm very lucky.